Ms. Howard, for what purpose? Thank you. Would the, would the lady yield? The lady yield for questions. Certainly. She yields. Thank you. I was going to ask Representative Gonzalez about this, but I'll go ahead and ask you uh, as the author of the legislation. I know that you have uh, information in here that indicates that, they, that the biological sex is going to be determined by the official birth certificate. Is that correct? Yes. The birth certificate that is issued at or near the time of birth, and this is the same as what we put in House Bill 25 mm -hmm. almost two years ago in the third special session. And are you aware of whether or not uh, institutions of higher education in our state currently require birth certificates for admission and enrollment to their institutions or to their athletic programs? My understanding is that they do, but this, this is why we're turning this over to the Higher Education Coordinating Board so that they can set up the general guidelines. Well, it, it would, I'm going to let you know that in talking to the University of Texas, they do not require birth certificates for admissions. So did you know that? Um, you just advised me. Okay. Thank you. So I'm concerned, and I'm asking you about the section that says a person may bring a civil action for injunctive relief against an institution of higher education or an intercollegiate athletic team uh, that violates this section. So my question would be, if they do not collect this information, they do not collect birth certificates right now, and I know you said that COBOR would set up rules, but if they don't have that information, and if someone doesn't reveal that they happen to be transgender, how is the institution supposed to know and, and be able to be in a position to where they cannot be, have this suit brought against them. It seems like that's pot potentially harmful to our high, higher education institutions. Thank you for that question, Representative Howard. Um, I would anticipate that in the new rules that the Higher Education Coordinating Board will issue, that they most likely will have the uh, educational institutions start collecting birth certificates for athletics. It only makes sense. So you're, you're assuming then that what the co-board is going to do is come up with rules that require all of our higher education institutions to begin to collect birth certificates to participate in athletic uh, activities at the institutions. Is that what you're suggesting is probably going to happen? That would be what I would anticipate. Uh, again, I'm not on that board, as none of us are, and... Well, I, I think it's going to be really important that we figure that out, though. If they're mm -hmm. going to be potentially held liable, that's a, that's a big deal right. for them to be held liable. And it says that it has to be entered at or near the time of the student's birth or modified to correct a Scribner or clerical error. How is the institution supposed to determine that? Again, it would be up to the person who brought the uh, civil liability and they would present evidence. There would, we can all wait and see what the rules are. They are very used to doing this sort of thing. They can also look at how does UIL handle it and other states and I'm sure they will come up with very practical guidelines. Well, I, just, I think it is something we need to be very cautious about and realize that what this legislation is doing is potentially setting up our higher education institutions throughout our state as well as the intercollegiate athletic teams to have uh, suits brought against them for perhaps things that they are not even aware of. Perhaps they don't even know that a person is transgender. They wouldn't even know to look at the birth certificate. And even if they had all the birth certificates, how would they necessarily know if it's accurate or not if this is a person who hasn't presented themselves as transgender but happens to be? I think it's a particularly difficult thing, and it's not something I think that will be received well by our higher, higher education institutions. So thank you.